Has your business ever been a subject of a defamatory statement? Or maybe you've been the subject of cyberbullying. What about if your data has been breached or compromised? Well, in the third episode of The Pivot, Attorney Pignol and I will be discussing more about the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012, more specifically, everything outside of the libel. Welcome to The Pivot, I'm James Deacon. And I'm Attorney Bernice Pignol. Now, from our last episode, we were covering basically the libel, and that took up a whole episode. In fact, medyo kulang pa. Mm, yeah. But we also want to focus on the other aspects of the law because there are many different parts right. to this and many different components. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, IP laws included yes. in here. There's uh, cyberbullying as well. Mm -hmm. There's data privacy. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you can give us a rundown of what people can expect mm -hmm. for this episode. Right, so in the previous episode, we discussed the libel aspect of the Cyber, Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2000. And so we have other crimes in there and the more relevant ones, especially for our business owners, are you know the copyright infringement um, laws or the provisions in that law. And also you have the violation of data privacy and you also have harassment or cyberbullying. So we're gonna have like an overview of all of that. And if you want us to discuss in thorough any of these um, laws or violations of the law, then let's send us a message and we'll have another episode for that solely dedicated for that particular topic. So. Yeah, but today we're going to answer a lot of, of questions based on the Cyber Crime Prevention Act. Okay, we did that precisely because last episode there were more questions than there were uh, time to answer them. So we're dedicating more for this. So just a recap, we're going to be doing a little bit, a little bit only of copyright infringement, mm -hmm. uh, the violation of the Data Privacy Act yeah. or DATA, depends on which side of the Atlantic you're on. DATA. <laughs> <laughs> the DATA. And the Internet Harassment or the Cyber Bullying Act mm -hmm. as well. So which one did you want to get your teeth into first? Yeah, I just want to give a, like a definition of copyright infringement, right? Because that's one of the ways that you can violate the law, the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012. And not a lot of people know this. So when you say copyright infringement, this is when a copyrighted material is posted by others without permission from the original author. So the individual who posted the content can be liable for copyright infringement, even if it was only shared with a few Facebook friends. So an example of this is like a popular show. Let's say, you know, the Tito Clock. Mm -hmm. show very popular right um, and then they're gonna copy some of your videos they're gonna splice it and they're gonna use it as like a comedic whatever like mm -hmm. a like a short clip right so they're gonna copy your material so that's a copyright infringement or let's say Tulfo for example there are like funny moments there with like confrontations mm -hmm. and whatnot and a lot of people make that memes you call it yeah. memes yeah well, you, actually this is it? this opens up a whole big sorry what do you call that like a brief, uh, like memes. funny video memes. Like, meme is like a still oh a meme is a still oh well, uh, yeah. Like a funny video, right? A moving meme. Right, yeah. And then they have, oh, TikTok, right? So so they splice that and then they kind of like claim it as their own and then it gets like 5 million views. So that's copyright infringement for you. This yeah. opens up a whole Pandora's box um, mm -hmm. because I think, where do you draw that line again? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. we keep talking about this mm -hmm. because the internet is such a new place, relatively speaking, that what happens if, let's say, there's so many different um, ways you can violate this law without knowing yes. uh, memes? Let's just use the standard memes, not the moving ones. <laughs> moving but the standard, memes. Yeah, we can come up with that term. Lack of moving. a better term, we, we're calling the moving memes, which <laughs> yeah. are the video versions yes, of the yes, memes. Yes. Now, if you have a meme that is uh, made up by somebody, but these uh -huh. are all circulating now in Viber groups, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you don't know the original author, but it's right. funny. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily, well, it's not a, a person per se, but somebody had to invent that. Uh -huh. Am I in breach if I share that on my Facebook and put CTTO? <laughs> CTTO, well, that's like a, like a blanket. umbrella. Yeah. I know, it's just like a... Consuelo but, de Bobo, mm, fire blanket, just immunization. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, but like, it really depends on if there's a, an actual owner of that, right? So if it's an original artwork or that photo was okay. originally made by one person, then that, there could be like a copyright infringement. But with the, with the advent of all the memes now, then it's, it's kind of hard to prosecute. It's almost impossible because you've got things like, you've heard of the crying Jordan, right? The Michael crying Jordan the crying. Meme, right. So Michael Jordan crying is one of the most, uh, uh -huh. probably the most shared meme. But you know, it, it takes on different lives every time uh -huh, it's shared, uh -huh, right? Because yeah. it's so universal. Uh -huh. um, 
is that a violation of his copyright? I mean, it's his image. It's his image. I think it, like if it's going to be a Philippi under the Philippine jurisdiction, it's more of like a breach of his privacy more than a copyright of his artwork. It has to be a creation or an artwork, right? So it's not really his artwork. So it's more of like a breach of his privacy, something like that. So no, it's not really a copyright infringement if it's just his image. But he can sue for something else, which is like a breach of his privacy if it's being you know spread around. Then how do you sue the internet? <laughs> you sue the person who posted. Yeah. But there are millions and millions and millions. That's the and challenge. There. Yeah. That's so, the challenge. I mean, there. but the law doesn't distinguish, does it? I mean, it yes. was doesn't say, oh, yes. there were millions of them. That means it's yes, right. Yes. It, if you happen to be caught, right? Is that uh, is is that possible? That okay? But I just shared the meme that everyone's sharing. Does the law uh -huh. look at it that way, or they say, no, well, no, not really. No, it ha it has to be a case to case basis, and you can't back up or buttress your defense based on you know how other many people. other people are right. doing. No, it's so not that's a not defense. a legal defense. No, it's not a so defense. So every time I'm driving, go oh, but that, that's uh -huh. not a right, that, right, right. Yeah. Okay, that's not yeah. a defense. So going that. back to the let's say the splicing of the video, you just have to be careful next time and just credit it to like whoever is the original author. And this is kind of related to our next you know crime that's being covered by the Cyber Crime Prevention Act, which is the breach of data privacy, mm -hmm. right? So for for example, um, your ID was posted on the internet and all of your information is there, like Ooh, what's your yeah. recourse, right? So under the law, you can actually sue that person who exposed you because that's a violation of your data privacy. And you can ask for, the, for, for help with the National Privacy Commission. So that's very common in the in the corporate setting, and and let's define data privacy, right? So this involves, a, I mean, breach of data privacy rights. So this involves posting of a private information of others, such as photos, which can be considered a violation, especially when such posts reveal personal details and others were able to tag or share the same. Mm. And so, for example, the very famous, I think, or the most common legal problem would be, you know, those lending apps. Oh. Yes, right? I do. So yeah, so um, you lend from them, you you borrow from them, and then they expose you to your contacts. Have you like encountered many cases times? Like many this? times, yeah. it it seems to be um, we it, some people call this being doxed. I guess doxed. doxed is a is a term where they basically expose your identity on mm -hmm. the internet. This is kind of a form of that. Um, if you've ever received a text message, usually from a, a lending firm, mm. because uh, let's say. I picked on your dress last time, but you're the only one that's physically here. That's no, let's why. pick on each other. No <laughs> yeah, exactly. problem. No problem. Just, let's say um, Attorney Pinyol borrowed money from this um, this <clears throat> lending app. Uh -huh. What they do is they get her, they need her contacts, mm. access to her contacts. Mm. And if she's even one day late, they send a blast message to oh, all yeah. of us saying how shameless she is. And they start using awful bullying tactics mm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're referring to. Um, what about if you sign the way you're right? What if you literally mm. said... It's in the fine print. Yes. Right? Does that I mean, who make reads legal? the terms and conditions? Nobody, right? right? You just go, I agree to all the terms exactly. and conditions. So, so what, that's the danger there. Um, and you couldn't sign up for the app if you don't check on that box. Right? But is it still legal if it's coercion? If, if they say, well, that's that's not constitutional. Right. I mean, it's against a or conflicting with a republic mm. act. Can you say, well, he signed it away. He's right. You can't sign away your mm. right to be murdered or something mm. like that. Right, right. It's, so there's another defense for that because you essentially waived your consent. Right, or you waived your right, um, um, you consented to it. So there's another way of, of looking at it is because um, it was unauthorized, mm -hmm. and it's also because there's a malicious release of your data, private of your data, or your personal information. Then you can still sue, even if you consented to all the fine prints in there. But because there was malice, again going back to the malice mm -hmm. we talked about in libel, so there's a malicious intent of public pu publishing all your data, your information and everything, you can still sue even though you checked off that box. So it's okay. not a guarantee, it's not right. like a shield, you know, um, not an immunity at all. You know what's probably an interesting case that I would like to get your opinion on mm -hmm. is, are you familiar with the Nas Daily situation with yes. the Wang Odi? Okay, right, yeah. that was a, oh, it, it blew up, I guess, mm -hmm. the timing was awful. It's it kind of quiet now though. It's quiet because it happened on the first day of the second lockdown. So I guess, mm -hmm. you know, anyone that gets Corriente on a, the first day of a lockdown, mm -hmm. you're, you're really, it's a bad time because uh -huh. the whole internet's just waiting to feast on somebody. Mm -hmm. But I guess in, in my limited understanding of the case, and it has been mm -hmm. explained to me personally mm -hmm. by the people of, of the NAS Academies, mm -hmm. they 
she did sign away mm -hmm. so she did give her Consent. and so did her authorized representative mm -hmm. but there was still something there was some kind of a conflict culturally with the tribe mm -hmm. so even if she technically signed mm -hmm. her rights away it still is in conflict with tribal law mm -hmm. tribal law does not NCIP. allow yes does not allow this this art to be reproduced for mm -hmm. a monetary value mm -hmm. because it inherently belongs to the tribe mm -hmm. so I, is that a fair example it's mm -hmm. like technically she signed but it there's a be. higher law on that's top right of it. that's right yeah so it's not like an end all be all yes. you know just because you signed off something so there are so many so many you know circumstances or so many factors that surround your consent and it has to be an informed consent it cannot be vitiated or forced or mm -hmm. coerced right and or so, illegal illegal yeah. that's right or it's it's violating another law which is yes. the ncip this time so the waiver of of that person is not Valid. absolute okay right and it can be you know superseded by a bigger law let's say so yeah so going back to that lending app if you're a victim of that um, what you can do is that you can write a letter or you can file a complaint with the National Privacy Commission and they will look into that and actually the NPC has investigated Good. some of this some of these apps you Good. know because they're very abusive they are very they are. Bastos. they are very you know bastos. like they, they expose you I mean imagine all of your friends knowing yeah. that you took a 5,000 peso loan right yeah. or like and you couldn't pay that that's mm -hmm. really humiliating it is and so you can actually on top of that data privacy breach case you can like file for unjust fixation or so many, so many other cases, right? Um, and then you can just, you know, offset your debt. <laughs> okay, let's, let's be super helpful here to some okay. people because this is something I've dreamt about doing. Can we, okay. like, give them a reply that they can send to these oh, people? Oh, wow, like yeah. a template. Because I, I tend to just, you know, okay. without... This my, is the NBI. Yeah, I usually send, you know, <laughs> this is uh, from the NBI because they don't know who they're texting, right? So they'll just get a thing back and say, you're in violation. I just make things up. I just put, like, a number there, RA432.6 <laughs> section B paragraph A. I told you you're going to be a good lawyer. Lawyer. Well, yeah, exactly. If you, it, if you can't convince them, confuse them. And usually, <laughs> what they do is they panic okay. um, because I just find it so mean. Mm -hmm, I find mm -hmm. it horribly mean mm -hmm. to do to a person. I mean, if you're going, look, pay your debts. This is separate. This is a completely separate argument, That's right? right? Paying That's your right. debts and being treated like this when you can't right. are two completely different things for me. Mm -hmm. But you know, the so mere, do your part also. Do you well? Do your part, but it just does not justify. Even mm -hmm. if you didn't pay your debt. Oh, yeah. That should not be allowed. And what we're saying is it isn't allowed. And yeah. here's the recourse. You can mm -hmm. go to the National Privacy Commission. That's right. But you can also send a message to the cash app or whatever it is, the yes, lending yes. app that you, you're yeah. using and saying, I have reported you to the National Privacy Commission. Expect to hear from Attorney Pignol and Tito James. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever that's worth. Scary, because yeah. those are your rights. So at least right. you can leave yeah. this show if you get yes. no other takeaway up until this point. Mm -hmm. Keep that saved reply in your phone, even mm -hmm. if they're contacting you for yeah. somebody else. Or you can say that this is a violation of my privacy rights, mm -hmm. right? And you could be imprisoned for this. Right? So violation of the data privacy has like a penalty of imprisonment, right? So it's a serious offense and people should not take it whimsically or flippantly. flippantly. So for those who are listening and want to send that message, you can say it that way, right? Where I'm going to report you or, you know, uh, you're going to get uh, go, go to jail because of this, something like that. So right. you definitely have the right to protect yourself against these kinds of harassments. And you want to save that reply, just telling you that. Okay, how about before we go into the next, um, you know, with the with COVID and this, uh, all these, are we allowed to say the C word here? We might get, um, you know, we might be censored, you know. Oh, but wow. Okay, with the, you know no, what I'm talking about, right? With the yes. QR codes and all that, a okay. lot of people complaining oh, yes, that yes. these are not being used for the virus or the mm, pandemic response mm. are being used for marketing purposes what do they mm, do there mm, if you all of a sudden you find yourself getting marketing material from people right. that you left your covid right. uh, information behind yes yes Same thing? if you can trace it back to mm. that particular establishment um you can definitely complain right so because you know our data you know data is actually the new oil mm. right now it's very very precious and very expensive so when when these companies would mine our data and like sell it it's really very expensive and and so if that happens, and I'm very, very, you know, conscious of my data privacy being breached with all of these QR codes mm -hmm. for, for COVID and everything.
saying um but it's you know it's the reality in life now but you can have a remedy and you have a recourse if for example an establishment used your data um to send you marketing tools so you can't complain definitely because your personal information your location where you were then we were eating and your phone number and your email mm -hmm. address and your name is a personal information that should not be published without your consent so yes same recourse you go to the national privacy commission for that okay keep that in mind national privacy commission that's really good advice okay we're running out of time so let's get straight into the internet harassment or cyberbullying uh-huh yes okay so the thing about cyberbullying is that there's really no law that's called mm -hmm. cyberbullying so it's just a law which gives a penalty for the traditional or crimes covered by the revised penal code when it's done through on, on in the online space right so that's cyberbullying for you so it occurs when someone behaves in a manner that is deemed threatening or intrusive the person can be sued for harassment or cyberbullying under republic act 10627 so for example a woman is being harassed online by her ex let's say mm -hmm. um, not UX, but <laughs> like a legit X, you know. So that could be cyberbullying if it's like um, done online, like ikaw malandi kang babae and all that, like bastos terms, right? So she can sue for cyberbullying in relation to RA 9262 or the viol uh, or the Act Against Viol Violence Against Women and Children Act. Right, because when you psychologically abuse a woman, that's a crime. And if it's done in the online space, that could be covered by cyberbullying oh. in relation to RA ninety two sixty. Are these 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 connect? These are two separate laws. So they'll, separate, be, they'll be filed separately. Yes. Uh, no, but when when you use the cyberbullying mm -hmm. law, you can just have it consolidated. So okay. it's just one case right so you can choose but no it's if it's done online then it's cyberbullying so if for example it's done against a child by a an ad adult then um it can be cyberbullying in relation to um child abuse again extent. like a lot of people probably don't want to go down the full route of, of court cases etc mm -hmm. so if we were going to give people advice, especially either women and children, let's mm -hmm. focus on those mm -hmm. because uh, these they seem to be the most under harassment and the targets for bullying. Yes. Teenage girls especially get mm -hmm. this on, mm -hmm. on Instagram, etc. Is there something that you would advise parents to, let's say, send the mm -hmm. account that's um, harassing their mm -hmm. child? Mm -hmm. Is there some kind of thing like we told with the National Privacy Commission, they can say, listen, you're in violation mm -hmm. of Republic Act mm -hmm. XYZ. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which one would they, how would they, how would they compose that message to scare off the people to leave their kid alone? Yeah, first of all, they can just report that count. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. And if they keep insisting on it, they could just do like send them that same message where, you know, tell them that it's a violation of cyberbullying in relation to child abuse or RA 7610 or cyberbullying in relation to um, RA 9262. So they can cite those laws for them because they have a penalty of imprisonment. Okay, so what about when all my all people start sending me messages? When I never win your raffles? How come oh you my is that part of I harassment said, and bullying? I think Seth will send you a message because like you that. also send yes. me those messages. But, I mean, like, when am I going to win your raffles? I'm not going to tell you the answer. No? Yeah, that, that could be unjust vexation, actually. <laughs> With all else fails, you can you can file for unjust vexation. All right, let's pause for a second and answer some questions because, like we said in the beginning part of the show, we had more questions than time to answer That's in the right. last show, so we'll dedicate this portion to it. Uh, firstly, I'll just rattle them off fast. Are there other cyber crimes included in the Cyber Crime Act? Yes, there are other crimes. So the crimes uh, mentioned in the Cyber Crime Prevention Act would be cyber squatting, child pornography, identity mm -hmm. theft, cyber sex, and libel, which we discussed the last time, and illegal access to data. So these cyber crime offenses can be found under Section 4 of Republic Act Number 10175 or the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012. Asking for a friend, okay. uh, the Cybersex uh, Act, uh, <laughs> for a friend. Uh, um, this is obviously if there's criminal, um, if it's non-consensual. Yes, of course. Yes. So this is only when, okay. Yeah, there's like, So like to that scandals. friend out there, um, that's your answer. You're, you're safe, you're All safe. All right, so if it's consensual and it goes, uh, well, that's, that's yes. separate. Now, what about can an employee be liable under the Cybercrime Act if she hacks the company's computer data? Mm. Oui. Mm. Oui. Oh, familiar. No, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, cybercrime law punishes illegal access or unauthorized access to the whole or any part of a computer system. I feel that you have an experience with this. Mm. Has any of your employees accessed 
your computer system. No, no. And is no. that employee here in this room? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, so far none. But uh, it, it it can be a problem. Mm, I know that. I think companies. it was the bulletin. Manila Bulletin's mm. Facebook account uh, recently mm. was, it wasn't necessarily, it was misused. Um, okay. Basically, an employee, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. uh, used, made comments under the Manila Bulletin mm -hmm. page, mm -hmm. but they were promoting mm. a candidate, a very oh, controversial I see. one. I see. I um, so whether it was an, you know, I forgot to log out or I deliberately used mm -hmm. Manila Bulletin, does that fall into the same thing or no? No, but... Because um, you're misrepresenting. Yeah, right, yeah. But you're kind of like fraudulent, right, in doing that. But mm -hmm. yes, it can still fall under Cybercrime Prevention Act. Okay, so... And then what about in the case where um, binaliktad yung owner ng website? You know, you, you post something and it gets a lot of kuryente mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you get kuryente from it. I know that was my staff! Oh, no, oh you get yeah. live... No, I didn't. You know, a lot of people... I was hacked! I was hacked! Oh, but you it know. was you. And you're yeah, just, but it's, it's mm. the natural defense when you've said something you regret. Yes. It's I was like hacked. a fallback all the time. Yeah. yeah. Even in cyber libel, like my, my phone was hacked, right? Well, you'd have to prove it, right? Yes, I mean, for the public it. to believe you, you'd have yes. to prove it. But Sometimes a CIDG would look into your laptop or computer if you really were, in fact. So hacked. they can actually check it? They can, with like court orders. Okay, so, but that's, that's a long way around. Mm -hmm. So in other words, keep your password safe that's and right. don't let people yeah. misrepresent you. In the same way that your PIN number for your ATM card, that's, that's right. your responsibility yes. to keep safe. Well, think of this as your ATM for everything. I mean, okay. this is your online mm -hmm. vault mm -hmm. for all your information. Mm -hmm. um, okay, can an employee be liable under the Cybercrime Act if she hacks a computer Company, company and then subsequently all company mm. files were destroyed or lost mm, yes definitely so this is a case for data interference right so it's when a person deletes or damages computer data or electronic data message without permission including transmission or introduction of viruses he or she is guilty of committing data interference so reckless alteration and deterioration of computer data also falls under this category Okay. Um, ooh, so much this fire yeah. through. and this is really helpful for like companies and corporations, right? Because these are very common, you know, m mistakes that employees make. Absolutely, mm. and as you pointed out earlier, uh, this data has become a commodity more mm. valuable than oil. In fact, they're saying it's the most valuable commodity mm. on planet right. Earth right now. So more if, than Bitcoin. No. Well, let's not go that far. That's a pure. <laughs> That's for next Bitcoin. month's episode. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> but you can see how. You need to guard this now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're For if sure, you're still yeah. of the old frame of mind that, uh, well, this is just on the internet. You well, have you're to be careful. you're not going to make it, as they mm. say. You need to understand that you need to protect this, and this is what this show is all about. Mm. In how you're protected by the law and what mm. you should be doing to keep yourself protected. Mm. So there is also is there a crime when an employee of let's mm. say a tech company mm -hmm. which creates and develops computer programs programs sell these programs to other persons other than their clients. Mm, yes, it's another crime punishable under the law. So this is a crime um, called misuse of devices. Mm -hmm. So it is when a person violates the law if the de devices are sold, distributed, imported, or made available without right. So these devices include computer program, access code, and computer passwords. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Jay had a question here. Yeah. Uh, he's within our group, right? <laughs> but he was throwing it out in between the takes and he said about, let's say, source codes. If you work with a company and then, mm -hmm. you know, later on you find out that they use that source code, whether mm -hmm. to build their website or an app or whatever, right. yeah. what's the recourse there? Does it fall yeah, also it under the same thing? That's right. It definitely falls under the Cybercrime Prevention Act. What's so great about this law is that it's almost all encompassing, but also specifically lakes down all the violations, right? So I think it could fall on like copyright infringement for that source code has like all the information right so it could be like theft right uh, but it's also like copyright infringement of that particular programmers um, ideas so it's theirs but he stole it so okay I have a very important question um, you, you know on Instagram or, or TikTok mm -hmm. right of these people that use the the over filter on their softening oh, of the gosh. skin is that is that part of libel because they're they're lying about a, what they actually look like <laughs> that's a stopper right yeah don't do it <laughs> just don't do it uh -huh. <laughs> or it's if you're gonna do it Number two, what naman oh, number all the ten? Way. What naman that you look like right. an anime or you know? Have you been scammed by those? No, but you just you just sometimes <laughs> go. I know what you look like in real life. And that <laughs> no, ain't really. It. no, really, no, really, no, really. We're kidding around, of course. You, yeah. you can do what you like with your own filters. Yes, You're representing no crime, yourself. No That's your image. You can do what you like. But if somebody else does it to you and puts the glamour glow too high. 
you can no, probably... No, but we should take like a selfie later with like a filter. Yes, yeah, so like just to, to show that. them exactly what, what we mean about that. <laughs> okay, uh, final question here. It is customary in companies that they provide computers or laptops mm -hmm. to their employees for their work, right? Mm -hmm. Take for example, an employee keeps on downloading apps or movies through torrent and mm. because of that, a virus has corrupted the system of the company. Can he, meaning the employee, why do you assume it's a guy, um, be liable oh, under sexist. the cybercrime law? Yeah, um, yes, definitely he can be because that's introducing like a virus, right? And it's very common also in offices. That's why you have to be careful. Don't bring in torrent or whatever in your laptop. So the cybercrime law uh, also punishes that as system interference. So it is defined as any intentional alteration or reckless interference or hindering with the functioning of a computer network or a computer by damaging, inputting, deleting, or deteriorating computer program or data, which is, um, and that's considered system interference. And when you introduce viruses, that's gonna be punishable under the Cybercrime Prevention Act. Okay, yeah. we only have time for one super last question, so okay. let's make it all encompassing. Uh -huh. What other crimes in cyber law uh, law do you think people in the corporate world world should be worried about or worry about? Yeah, I think it's more of like um, the introduction of viruses, right? Because that could totally take down an entire operation, like your entire business operation could cease sees in a snap just because of a virus so they have to be very careful of that they have to be diligent in, in informing their you know employees to be careful with the kind of things that they download or do not allow them to download anything at all this is why I always wear a face shield on my Mac. Yes, it's got that, per, you know, for what? Always, but it's prevented from viruses. Oh, perfect, you know? yeah, just, perfect. You know, where I'm a safe one. Okay. okay, great, great. I'm going to do that, Tisha. So but let's yeah. just do a quick recap of what we've covered so far because um, we do have to wrap this up, but we do want you to have at least some key takeaways from this. Is uh, One, we're talking about the online cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the copyright, and we're also mm -hmm. talking about data privacy. That's right. That's All right. are protected under the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of Correct. 2012. Correct. There is recourse for you if you feel that your data has been compromised and is being used against you. You've been mm. all your private information has been put out anywhere, or you're getting marketing material mm. from something that you signed up for because mm -hmm. of a health declaration. You can go to the National Privacy, Privacy Commission. Commission. You can find them online, That's right. and you can write to them. That's you right. don't need to physically visit them. You can send them an email. Yeah, send them an email there. All right. Is there anything else you'd like people to remember of today's episode before we let them go? Right. So just to like bring it back to the business owners and corporations you also have to be aware of your rights and also at the same time of your responsibilities to your employees to make sure that their privacy are being protected you know and also that you know you create a safe space in your workplace for these kinds of violations so so yeah let's all respect each other's rights and let's all know that we do have a recourse when it comes down to you know our rights being violated this way absolutely remember this is just the beginning we're only really starting to get totally immersed mm. in this digital economy yeah. and in this digital landscape that we're now starting to practically live in. Especially exactly. COVID has accelerated it to the point. It's never going to be the same again. It's never going to be the no. same. And you can imagine all the development is going to be into creating what, well, if you believe in sci-fi, metaverses, etc. Well, we'll be spending Ooh. more and more time online in a richer experience because now mm -hmm. we're doing mm -hmm. it in a one-dimensional sort of way. Right. But as this virtual reality steps up, which you can imagine it will do, we're going to be doing more immersive experiences online mm -hmm. and you're going to want to be able to be protected That's right. under That's the right. law That's for right. that. So we hope that you've learned a lot from our episode today as we did two episodes on Cybercrime <laughs> Prevention Act 2012. What can they look forward to next week? Next week we will be um, having a very special guest. Um, so he is a an angel investor. He's an investor and we're going to find out from him what it takes to be a startup, you know, a startup business and what makes an uh, like an investor invest their money on startups so you'll learn all of that in our next episode and remember that's definitely the way to go in this whole new economy that we live in you're everyone out there is an entrepreneur everyone out there has the capacity mm -hmm. remember the playing field on a digital landscape is finally getting more and more oh, level yes, we're getting yeah. rid of all of those legacy systems and structures that once were oppressive to people who didn't or weren't born into that situation or didn't have the paperweight to be able to succeed so get excited a lot to get excited about but we're going to be here for you every step of the way to guide you at least legally 
on where you stand and how you can build your fortune and of course your future in this new era. Till then, my name is James Deacon. And I'm attorney Bernice Pignol and this show was brought to you by the law firm of Pignol, Santos and Associates. And we'd like to thank our sponsor, the Aklan Group of Companies and everyone who supported this show and for everyone who's been watching. Don't forget the food because that's always good. Mama Foods <laughs> and Nonas. We had Nonas today. So really thank you very pizza. much. Yes. We'll see you next week. Till then, take care everyone. Bye-bye.